we are looking and studying from grace and riches and how god by his grace brings about riches into our life uh, that will ultimately bring about the fulfillment of god's purposes in our lives and uh, we've been studying from 1 chronicles chapter 29 and verse 12 where the bible says riches and honor they come from you lord you are in sovereign control over all in your hand is power and might to strengthen and to exalt any man who puts his trust in god therefore we are looking at how god brings the riches into our lives many a times the moment the word riches is mentioned we have an inclination to think about it only in financial terms but we are looking at from god's point of view what true riches really mean the bible talks about being rich in god it talks about being rich in faith it talks about being rich in in good works it also talks about god being rich in mercy therefore we are going to look at it from god's point of view last um, sunday we looked at how god brings riches and it is connected to the vision that god provides vision and provision they go to together they go hand in hand in the kingdom of god and that is why we looked at this particular verse of scripture when the holy spirit comes upon you your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams your sons and daughters they shall prophesy and upon the male and the female servants god says he will pour out his spirit without a measure so vision comes as a result of the holy spirit coming upon you meaning he is communicating what is in the heart of god concerning you he begins to communicate that into your heart when you get hold of the vision of god for your life provision is not a problem because where vision is provision automatically follows and that is why david says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life those who seek the lord they lack no good thing my god shall supply all my needs according to his glorious riches in christ all these verses of scripture just make it uh, make the truth very plain when we get hold of the vision of god provision simply follows let me uh, remind you again what is being successful what is success in god's uh, god's point of view this is how i could summarize that success being successful is doing god's will say together with me being successful is doing god's will i i'm sure you had your breakfast this morning let's have one more go to be successful is to do god's will and what does it mean to be prosperous it is having everything to do god's will that is called being prosper doing being prosperous i gleaned all those things from god's word you can go through it and you can come to your own conclusions so the bible says in order for us to be successful in order for us to be prosperous it is all connected to god's vision and god's provision this morning we are going to look at another aspect uh, from the same passage of scripture where we left it last week genesis chapter 49 and verse 26 these are the promises or the blessings pronounced by jacob over his son joseph and this is the pinnacle of it in verse 26 the blessings of your father have surpassed the blessings of my ancestors up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills may they be on the head of joseph on and on the crown of the head of the one distinguished among his brothers jacob gives the full full extent of his blessing in pronouncing all these wonderful words over his son joseph and we need to turn our bibles again to genesis chapter 41 and find out another aspect of the blessing of god which enabled him to reach this particular um, uh, aspect in his life where he begins to experience the goodness of god in a very special way genesis chapter 41 remember now he is standing before pharaoh the then powerful king in the then known world and these are the words spoken not by joseph himself but by a king who recognizes something very special in the life of this very young man the bible says he was 30 years old when he stood before pharaoh that is one kind of um, uh, a calculation that goes before you are 30 you need to be settled 
in what God wants you to do in life. Not just getting settled, getting married and so on. But th- those things are also very good. But there is, this is not the way, but this is an observation that you can make from God's word. 30 years he was standing before Pharaoh. David was 30 when he became the king of Israel. Jesus was 30 when he started the ministry. Some of us are 60. Well, fill in the blanks. You understand what I'm trying to say. The whole point is this. It is not condemnation, but rather we need to have an aspiration in our heart. Lord, I want to get hold of it as quickly as possible and live, live the life that you want me to live. 30 years old, standing before the most powerful man, man in the then world. These are the comments made by Pharaoh himself. Uh, Genesis chapter 41 verse 38 onwards. Then Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this in whom is a divine spirit? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has informed you of all this, there is no one so discerning and wise as you are. Therefore, you shall be Lord over my house. And this is the reason why he got promoted. You know, this is not something, you know, because luck came by Joseph and suddenly he had a breakthrough and suddenly from being nobody, he became a somebody. No, that is not how it works. Let me put it in context for you. Luck system, we don't believe in it as Christian people. Let me say it again for you. As Christian people, we don't believe in luck, but we believe in God's grace. What is the difference you might be asking? If you believe in luck, out of a thousand, only one person will be lucky. But if you believe in grace, all thousand of you can be prosperous. Are you with me? And that is why we don't believe in luck, but rather we believe in the grace of the Almighty God. So some people will say, well, look at Joseph, you know, uh, uh, yesterday he was nobody, but uh, today, you know, all of a sudden, within two, three, four hours, he became the chief prime minister or the chief person in the whole of Egypt. You know, you understand that. You know, people might be like that, but it didn't work like that. You know, the Bible says, you know, Pharaoh himself, a man who oversees the entire nation, he says, you know, there is no man as wise and discerning as you are in the whole empire. Therefore, I want you to be the Lord over my entire household. And this is where I want you to make this connection. There is a connection between wisdom and wealth. Say together with me, there is a connection between wisdom and wealth. The following passage, uh, verses of scripture, you find, remember last week we looked at it, the moment Pharaoh said these words, then he put a ring on Joseph's finger, and then he put a necklace around his neck, and then he gave him the second best chariot in the whole of Egypt, and then he also got him married, uh, you know, to a very powerful family, and all these things they just followed on one single day. And how did it all happen? You know, did it happen accidentally? Did it happen because he was a lucky man? No, 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 no. The Bible simply says the spirit of God was living inside of him. And this was a comment not made by, you know, by a spiritual man. It was a comment made by Pharaoh himself. And why is that very important? In, in his days, Pharaoh was considered to be God. You know, and the whole of Egypt, they began to worship Pharaoh as God. And this is how I would like to communicate that. The God with the small g recognized the God with the big g. You understand what I am saying? You know, people are worshipping me as God. But when I see you, I see something much more different. I see something much more special than people kind of claim that I have. He says, I see the divine spirit of God living in you. And that is why there is a distinguishment in your wisdom, the way you talk, the way you conduct your life. And he says, it is because of the divine spirit living in you. And let me tell you, it is that wisdom which the spirit of God gave Joseph that connected him to the wealth that God has in store for that particular man of God. 1 Kings chapter 3, there is a wonderful passage of scripture uh, where again there is a connection made between wisdom and wealth. 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 12 and verse 13. Remember Solomon was a young man, probably 16, 17 years of age, they say, when he became the king of the whole of Israel. And remember, he is, uh, he, is a, he is a person who is succeeding David. And uh, remember, you, we use the expression, filling another man's shoes. 
especially if it is david's shoes it's very very difficult to fill that in because when david was solomon's age 16 or 17 he has already killed a lion he has already killed a bear he has already wrote a few psalms he is already filled with the spirit and he has got numerous experiences to put it in another context what god promised a thousand years ago to abraham you know it took an almost thousand years and it found its full fulfillment in the time of david to replace such a man or to become a successor of such a great personality you know it is really kind of a challenging situation and but the wonderful thing is this god appeared to him in a dream and god seems to ask a question to solomon ask me whatever and i am going to give it to you remember if you ask this question to a 16 or a 17 year old you know in our own times ask me whatever you want i will give it to you probably they will ask for iphone 8 you know because that is what the in thing for those kind of people but praise god solomon had some instruction been given into his life remember in a certain passage of proverbs he says i was the only child and this is what my mother thought me this is what my father thought me then again parental instruction is very very important in our life if you don't teach them what is good they will learn it from somebody else but we cannot guarantee whether it will be good or it will be bad anything that is good may god use us to teach it to our children are you with me because we are living in an information age if you keep silent then people will be kind of you know uh, giving their opinions their world view and their their way of thinking is kind of being poured or pumped into our children as they watch as they read as they kind of have a social life with other people but solomon this is what is kind of very interesting for me even in his dream he had so much of clarity because he says my father has told me this my mother has instructed me and that is why he says you know don't, don't let go of the instructions that god has given into our hearts and into our lives god is asking me ask me whatever i'm going to get it and solomon responds in a very mature kind of way he says lord i am just a young person and you have put me on the throne you know to rule over such a vast kingdom i do not have much experience all these things are going on in the dream and he's saying i don't have much experience you know i my age is very very little and people who worked along with my dad they are also part of the court and i have to sit in front of them and some of them are giving me looks you know and they are kind of saying you know what is this guy going to do when you compare him to his father he is nothing he is a nobody you know he does not know right and wrong he does not know right from the left and so on and solomon says lord i don't have much experience i'm just a young man i do not know what is right and what is wrong i want you to give me wisdom say together with me lord i want your wisdom if you if you are seated here i have been a christian for 40 years i have good experience let me tell you you are good you have me i have good experience but the challenges you may face in the future you need more than experience you need god in your life and that is very important and the bible says solomon is asking lord give me wisdom and the bible says it so pleased god in verse 12 he says i am going to give what you ask in tamil bible it comes out much more un vaarthin padiye unakku seiven i am going to do exactly according to your word how can god the almighty say to a man i am going to do it according to your word because his word was in line with the eternal word of god and that is why god says i am going to do it exactly according to what you have asked and the very next verse 13th verse says i will give you a discerning heart but i will also give you that which you have not asked for which is riches and honor and look at our praise this morning not just our praise praise in general you know many people are asking for that which you do not need to ask for and many people don't ask for that which you need to ask for and solomon asked the right thing he says lord give me wisdom and god says not only will i give you wisdom i will also give you that which you did not ask for which is the the riches and honor that only god can bring into our life why is wisdom so important you know let me put it like this you know you have vision and when you have a vision 
you certainly need provision in order to fulfill the vision that God has blessed you with. How many of you understand what I am saying? God has given me a big vision. Praise God for it. But if you want to fulfill the vision that God has given you, you do need provision. You do need money. You do need strategy. You do need the help of people. You need the favor of God. You want all things to work together for good so that the vision of God can come to fulfillment. But the, what is the key to all this is this, the wisdom that God gives. What does wisdom do? It connects the provision to the vision of God. I am going to say that again. It connects the provision to God's vision. Let me approach it from another point. What if a man has vision and also provision, but he cannot see the connection between the two? You know, that is why some people I have come across who say it like this. We have lots, but we do not know what to do with it. You know, have you come across such people? I was talking to one who was kind of braggingly said, I have so many things I do not know to God, what to ask from God. Because I have money, I have fame, I have this and that and the other. So when I go to God, you know, I am in a, in a kind of a dilemma. I don't know what to ask God from. In my heart I thought, why don't you ask God for wisdom? Why don't you ask God for some discernment? Why don't you ask God for some divine knowledge which will connect everything that God has already provided in your life so that his vision can come to its fulfillment in your life. So what does the wisdom of God do? It connects the provision of God that God has given into your life to the vision that God has already provided. If there is no connection made, what will happen is this. You will have lots to live on but nothing to live for. I'm going to say that again. You have lots to live on, but nothing to live for. That is what so tragically happened in the life of Solomon himself. He started so well, God gave me wisdom. And because of the wisdom and the provision that God provided, he began to do wonderful things for God. But towards the end of his life, he says, I have everything that I need. Gold I have, silver I have. I have dug wells, I have built towers. I have built cities. I have mended gardens and so on and so forth. Literary things, I know it all. There are thousands of musicians, art and architecture. Everything is at my disposal. But having so much in his life, the key words that he always keeps on saying is this. Vanity and vanity. Vanity of all vanities. What is the problem? You know, some people have made an observation like this. Listen to every, everything Solomon says, but don't follow what he does. Because he himself is a good example of preaching well and not pra practicing properly. I came across this illustration long time ago. There was this uh, couple living in a, in a particular house. One was a PhD doctor, a theo PhD in theology. He was a professor. And his wife was a medical doctor. And somebody came to the door and rang the bell. The maid answered the door. And the person said, I want to see the doctor. For which the maid replied, the preaching one or the practicing one? You understand what I am trying to say? See, that is what happens many a times with Solomon. He is a good preacher. He has kind of noted it down, what wisdom is all about and so on and so forth. But when you take his life... You know, there was a disconnection between provision, between purpose and between God's vision for his life. But it was taken over by the pleasures that life could offer. And in the end he says, vanity and vanity and vanity. But this morning God is not going to leave you to that particular end. But rather we are going to proclaim it's all grace, grace and grace alone. And that is what God is going to provide in your life, in my life. So wisdom connects the things of God that God has already provided so that we will have a wholesome picture about what God wants us to do in and through our life. Going back to Genesis 41 again. Where is the key, you know, that can unlock this whole aspect of wisdom and connect us to the wealth that God has already in store for us. Verse 38 of Genesis 41. Then Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this in whom is a divine spirit? He begins to recognize the key for wisdom and understanding. You know, it is not that uh, Joseph has gone to some particular institution where he has learnt all about wisdom. No, no, no. This is a man who just got released from prison. But how come he is having so much of wisdom, so much of knowledge, so much of understanding, not just interpreting what is there in front of his eyes, 
but he can see further seven years down the line he can see what is going to happen and he can give you the counsel to overcome that particular problem that is going to happen seven years down the line Pharaoh recognizes this is supernatural he has got the spirit of God living inside of him the wisdom that God can give you cannot go and study it in a, from a book you know there is one book that you can get it from that's the Bible what I am trying to say is this it cannot be kind of earned or it cannot be gained from other sources because it is godly wisdom and it can only come from God and how does God give you that particular wisdom into your hearts? The Bible says there is a divine spirit living inside of this man. Isaiah chapter 11, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit and connects the Holy Spirit's work and his, his grace uh, to wisdom and knowledge that he wants to provide in your life and in my life. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 onwards, this is a prophetic utterance of Jesus concerning Christ and let me read it for you. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse and a branch from its roots will bear fruit. Listen to this. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and strength. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. It will rest upon him. Talking about Jesus Christ. What does the spirit of God do? We come across this particular wonderful verse of scripture where it kind of explains the grace provided by the spirit in the context of wisdom. It says he is a spirit who gives wisdom and understanding. Wisdom involves three things as, as we keep saying it again and again. It is knowledge and it is understanding and the whole thing can be called in one word. It is called wisdom. It also includes prudence. It also includes discernment and so many other aspects. But here there are uh, three parts of two where it says spirit of wisdom and understanding. Not only understanding, a spirit of counsel and also strength. What does it mean? This is a wonderful verse of scripture. Remember the Bible says our God is great in counsel and mighty indeed. There are lots of people who have wonderful ideas but when it comes to uh, you know, executing those ideas they do not have the strength to do it. But when the Holy Spirit gives you an idea He will also give you the strength. Amen. So do you want an idea from the Holy Spirit? If He has already given you the idea it also means He will also give you the strength that is needed to execute what He has planted in your heart. Not only that, the Bible says, the spirit of knowledge and the, and the fear of the Lord. In the last days, the Bible says that knowledge will increase and love will decrease. You know, compared to every other century uh, before us, this is the particular century where, you know, the scientific kind of inventions and knowledge has increased in a tremendous kind of way. But the more knowledge increases, we also need to make an observation that this century has been the bloodiest century when you compare to all other centuries put together. People think once people have education, then education will do the job of refining them in their hearts. But let me tell you education. You know, who are the people who are, who are good at doing scams? Are you with me? They are not people who do not know how to read or write. They are people who are well educated. They have masters from prestigious institutions. They are in good, good powerful positions. But the problem is their heart is not right. If education can change a man's heart, it should have changed that particular man's heart. But the truth is this. Education can only show light into the desperate nature of man. Only the light, the true light, which can enlighten any man, only that can bring about a transformation in any person's life. Lift your hand and shout a big hallelujah. We are not against education. The Bible says, in all your getting, you know, in all your gaining, the Bible says, gain understanding. Yes, it's good to earn money. It's good to earn all the other things. But in all your getting, Solomon says, get some understanding. Because it is this understanding will make you stand in life. The Bible says they bragged about their horses, they bragged about their chariots and they were all broke and they fell. But we bragged or we declared the greatness of our God and we stand and we stand upright. It is the understanding that God gives that will give you the strength to stand in your circumstance. Whatever problem you are going through this very morning, 
i want you to make it your prayer this morning lord give me understanding so that i will see and stand and see the glory of god in my life hallelujah the bible says be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the nations i will be exalted among the people and i will be exalted in your very own situation the bible says he is a god who gives knowledge but together with knowledge it also is accompanied by the fear of god what is the fear of god again it is not some kind of fear you know to use the tamil expression sami kanna kutiram you know that is the kind of fear that people have if i do something wrong you know they have a picture of god you know seated on the throne with a long whip that can reach to the last row you understand what i'm saying so if you are sleeping during sermon you know and uh, nobody is don't worry about that are you with me you know that, that is the picture they have see a god sitting there on the throne with a long whip with a long stick and with you know paper weights in his hand ready to throw at people who make mistakes and that the, that that kind of an attitude instills in them a fear remember when we were in in school for example we had lots of teachers and some teachers are very good with canes you understand that especially during their class everybody will be quiet whether the whether they are listening or not but they will be very quiet why are they quiet they fear the cane are you with me nowadays it's the opposite teachers are very fearful of the children but whatever that might be the whole point is this their fear of god is more fear of punishment but that is not what the bible is teaching our fear comes as a result of reverence it comes as a result of our love for god for example a very senior oh, man person he comes inside uh, our church for example the moment he comes we all stand up why do we stand up because not because we have fear that he is going to hit us or slap us no we stand because we have respect towards that particular person and that is needed even today you know in our when i went to bible school you know they gave a handbook and in the handbook they, it said the first point is this when the lecturer walks inside the classroom you need to stand up you know you are talking to the wrong person in india we are always outstanding <laughs> you understand we are all but they have lost it they have lost it when the senior person come the person who is going to impart knowledge when he comes they are in the position you have to tell them you need to stand in order to show respect but praise god for our india you know we still have some of the good old things left with us are you with me so here it is more a uh, fear of the lord not in the sense of punishment but rather more in the sense of a personal relationship with god i revere him i adore him i love him therefore i will not do anything that will bring any kind of friction in between our relationship that is the kind of fear and where do you get all such kind of wisdom the bible says the spirit of god will rest upon christ what did christ say to you and to me i am going to the father but i am going to send you a comforter who will always be with you remember god is the same yesterday today and forever the same spirit that was in joseph is the same spirit that is abiding in you the same spirit that was upon christ is the same holy spirit that is living inside of you and me the bible says in romans the very same spirit who brought christ out of the dead he is also residing in you and he will give you the strength in your physical bodies to overcome whatever problem that you are facing in life it is the same holy spirit say together with me it is the same holy spirit remember the bible says when the spirit of god came upon samson he began to experience supernatural strength when the spirit of god came upon david he began to play it in such a way that the evil spirit left the place and people were beginning to enjoy healing that comes from god and they began to experience peace let me uh, kind of um, underline it again and again and again it is the same holy spirit say together with me it is the same holy spirit but many a times people reduce the holy spirit 
just to some kind of tingling feeling in their physical bodies even there is a build up for that you know people say now i'm going to pray and the holy spirit is going to come upon you you will feel warmth you will feel cold and so on and so forth again we are not mocking people's experience but there is more than feeling warmth there is more than feeling chill there is more than you know having goosebumps but it is more important that we are our mind is tuned to what the word of god is saying are you with me don't go in search of experience and lose out on the, the the enrichment that can only come through god's word many times we always use this particular kind of expression i feel have you come across that that is that is the most kind of uh, expressive language at the moment i feel i should be doing that i feel remember feelings are very subjective you know many times we we think the pinnacle of worship is towards the end when everybody claps their hands and you feel some kind of exuberance in your heart and you kind of feel something very uh, emotional that is how people think no 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 let me tell you even when you don't feel anything emotional the spirit of god is still with you Amen. hallelujah i don't feel god doesn't matter god is still there when you know he is still there you begin to feel him if you know what i mean say a big amen to that feelings follow thoughts not the other way around therefore that is why the bible says have the mind that was in christ jesus let it be in you also remember what jesus says there is going to come a time when everyone will leave me but i will never be alone because the father is always with me if you are with me say a big amen to that are you feeling alone this morning the bible says you will never be alone it is impossible for a christian to be on his own i'm going to say it again it is impossible for a christian to be on his own because he has promised never to leave me nor forsake me would you say it together with me he has promised never to leave me nor forsake me it is not how you feel it is what the bible is teaching the bible says the spirit of god when it comes upon you he gives you understanding in regard to how he works in your heart and in my heart the holy spirit say the lord jesus said i'm going to send you a comforter who will never leave you nor forsake you and how does the wisdom of god you know here we found the spirit of god begins to impart wisdom into our lives and there is another wonderful connecting verse in 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 onwards the bible says christ has become our wisdom say together with me christ has become our wisdom we are studying about wisdom from above in our bible study we still need to do a lot of work on it and we will continue to study in the future also here the bible says he has become our wisdom verse 30 but by his doing you are in christ jesus who became to us wisdom from god wisdom not only wisdom righteousness sanctification and also redemption the whole point is this spirit of god imparts wisdom and christ becomes our wisdom how can we again clarify or again bring clarity when it comes to practically applying god's wisdom in our lives let me put it like this if christ is our wisdom then his word becomes our standard for living let me say it again if christ is our wisdom then his word becomes the standard for our living why do i say that again remember if you want to take a wise decision your decision has to be based on that is what i felt follow your feeling follow your heart follow your gut all these expressions are there out in the world but if you want to make a wise decision follow the word if christ is your wisdom then word becomes the standard of your living i'm going to say it again if christ is your wisdom which he is then his word becomes our standard for taking or making decisions in our life and how can that is possible that is why you need to know what the word of god is saying concerning a particular aspect for example if you're going to take a, a, a decision regarding financial things you know you can ask uh, the, uh, your advice from a financial consultant which is all right 
but do you know that there is a financial consultant who knows more than every other financial consultant in the whole world you remember the bible says all the riches all the gold and silver it belongs to me all the cattle on a thousand hills it all belongs to me the, the earth and the fullness thereof it all belongs to me riches and honor it comes from god who do you think you should be asking questions you know oh, i'm going to ask him because he just made a few bucks last year no you can ask him nothing wrong with that but i'm going to give you another higher option or the only option which you should need to take that is you need to consult god say it again together with me i need to consult god regarding your health there is a, the bible says he is our healer remember we sang we have very good doctors here we are very thankful for what they can do but let me tell you god need to give wisdom to doctors in order for them to do what is right in us you know when you go to the doctor they ask a question doctor is here are you allergic to anything idu varaikku illa you know i don't know <laughs> you know so far so good but only after you give whatever you gave only then i can know whether i'm really allergic to that or not but there is a god who knows everything are you with me you need to consult god i'm going to say that again you need to consult i have consulted with so on now this this popular opinion is all, always there before you go to the doctor you become a doctor yourself you know you search google you know and uh, as soon as you read all the symptoms even as you are reading it you are feeling it <laughs> you understand and then you go to the doctor and the doctor says you know oh, no problem and immediately you come to the conclusion he passed with aries you know he has not studied well maybe he got into management seat you know because you think you yourself are a big doctor you know insult of consulting there are things that google does not know hallelujah you know you need to consult god tell your neighbor you need to consult god god knows more than google are you with me he knows more than any person you can ever have in life he knows everything and that is why the bible says in before his eyes everything is is naked the bible says there is nothing hidden from his eyes we have such an awesome god who is in love with you and me the bible declares that nothing is able to separate us from the love of god that is in christ jesus the point is this if god is our wisdom then our decisions needs to be based upon the word of god come with me again to another wonderful passage of scripture you know i wanted to go through three points in the service but i finished only one last sun, uh, last service so i will stick with one again in the english service we have lots and wonderful things to study from god's word james chapter 3 and verse 14 and verse 15 that is what is called the parallelism parallelism to put it in simple terms the duplicate always looks like the original do you are you with me on that the duplicate always looks like the original but the original is original and the duplicate is duplicate we need discernment and in spiritual life also there is what is called parallelism the bible says you know he is the true light which enlightens any man and the devil also comes as the angel of light you know deceiving people in their in their in their understanding james chapter 3 verse 14 onwards the bible says but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth this wisdom the bible uses the word wisdom but in within inverted commas wisdom is not that which comes down from above but rather it is earthly it is natural and it is also demonic you know this this particular wisdom to use another alternate word this is not just wisdom this is more you know uh, the the bible uses this particular word i remember it in tamil avanudi tandarangalai neengal you are not unaware of his schemes you know and the schemes are connected with the devil where when wisdom is connected with god there is a difference between what comes from god and what comes from the uh, what that does not come from god verse 15 again this wisdom that which does not come down from above it is more earthly it is natural and it is more demonic what is the underlying um, aspect of that 
in verse 14 if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart it says do not be arrogant let me put it like this if you have ill feeling towards others for example somebody has betrayed you somebody has done bad things for against you somebody has spoken ill of you and you came to know about it and you are feeling hurt but the hurt is becoming more you know becoming bitter in your heart and it is kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, growing in your heart in with that particular premise if you are going to think about that particular man will wisdom work or will scheme begin to work you understand what i'm trying to say you know he has done something bad and you feel hurt and not just mere hurt now you are feeling bitter towards that particular man in the premise of bitterness in heart if you are going to plan anything against that particular person let me tell you it won't be a plan to bring something good into his life it be a plan to destroy him completely and that is why the bible says this kind of scheming this kind of thinking it does not come from god it does not come from above it comes from three things the bible says one it is earthly earthly meaning it is a, it, it follows the earthly system it's from the world what is in the world the bible says the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life the bible says these are not from god but these are from the world then the bible goes on to say not only it is earthly the bible says it is natural natural meaning sensual i'm sure you have watched um, um, discovery channels and all those things that deal with animals have you have you seen have you watched them you know when when a, when a predator goes in order to catch the prey you know it works so smart you know it picks a space it, it picks a particular spot where the camouflage is very good you know where it cannot be identified then it sits there for almost one hour you know and we call that patience is it is that the fruit of the spirit you understand what i'm trying to say it sits there for almost one hour it waits and when the right time comes it just pounces on the prey and that's the job done why is so much of planning involved so much of patience is involved so much of perseverance is involved all for one basic reason i want to satisfy my instinct you understand what it simply means to have to 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 satisfy its stomach you know and to have to procreate those are the two basic instincts for which the animals will go to any extent possible in order to fill their stomach and in order to procreate bible says if you are going to work on that particular level the bible says this wisdom is not from god this is more natural it is more earthly meaning even animals are smarter than you that is what the bible is you know kind of says or teaches not only that when you go to the next level it goes much deeper the bible says not only natural not only earthly it becomes very demonic in nature and that is why our prayer needs to be this lord we want to have wisdom that comes from above wisdom that will connect us to godly wealth so that we can fulfill god's plan and purpose in and through our lives the bible says this kind of wisdom is not from god then what is godly wisdom again the bible says joseph had wisdom and understanding which kind of promoted him to the top space in egypt where he was able to fulfill god's will in his life come with me to proverbs chapter 8 there is a wonderful passage of scripture three things but one we are going to concentrate this morning proverbs chapter 8 and verse 12 onwards what kind of wisdom does god give into your life we want wealth we want riches we want the blessing of god but we want it all to come in a very godly way for which god gives his own wisdom to you and to me proverbs chapter 8 verse 12 onwards the bible says i wisdom dwell with prudence and i find knowledge and discretion listen to this verse 13 the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth i hate this is this is godly kind of wisdom the bible says you know the the verse 13 again the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth i hate what does it simply mean 
when god gives you wisdom you don't have to go the evil way you don't have to take the way of the proud you don't have to take the arrogant path in order to gain things but rather the wisdom that god gives it is more godly in nature therefore the first sign of godly wisdom is this i hate evil say together with me i hate evil but in the world it's not like that if if it takes evil in order to get wealth let me take that path because i want what i need i want money if it is an arrogant path if it's a crooked path if it means walking over people's head it doesn't matter all i want is all i need and i will get it however i want it but when it comes to godly wisdom it doesn't work like that the bible says i hate evil say it together with me i hate evil to hate evil is to experience god's fear which leads to wisdom in a person's life not only that the bible says pride and arrogance and the evil way has nothing to do with godly wisdom have you come across people the moment they start speaking the prominent word will be i i me myself and all those things you know they might have done something you know extraordinary but they never give glory to god they are always saying it is my remember nebuchadnezzar who said the great babylon that i built remember what the devil was speaking while even while he was in heaven he says i am going to climb i am going to build this i am going to be exalted i am going to take all the worship whenever i becomes the center of your life you are not a wise man you understand what i'm trying to say if you are really wise you begin with god i'm going to say it again if you are really wise you begin with god you begin with god's word the moment i takes the center in your life then that is where you begin to go down in life maybe you will get all the earthly possessions you may want but the point is this when it comes to heavenly calculations and the kingdom of god perspective we end up on the losing side and god doesn't want you to be there he wants you to be with him he wants you to be blessed and the bible says pride and arrogance i hate and perverted tongue you know i it's a, it's got nothing to do with wisdom this is very important because people say you know if you don't take this particular approach you can never prosper in this world have you come across this you know unmaya irundha polaikka mudiyadu if you are a man of integrity if you keep things straight you cannot prosper in the given system it might be true but i am not in the given system i have god's system which means the bible says a faithful man will abound with god's blessing say together with me a faithful man will abound in god's blessing let me give you three instances in the life of joseph and what made him a really wise man in his life come with me to genesis chapter 39 wisdom not just connects you to money wealth but it also connects you to character that only god is well pleased with come with me to genesis chapter 39 and verse 9 a very well known passage of scripture here you know there is a very uh, um, a tempting situation for joseph and uh, this is how he responds in verse 9 there is no one greater in this house than i and he has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife how then could i do this great evil and sin against the lord you know many times wisdom is not just merely connected to wealth it is connected to character also and look at how he words the whole thing he says there is nobody greater than me in this house in other words if i wanted to go your way i can if i kind of cooperate with you i can have the best of both worlds if you know what i mean but he says you know that is possible but how can i go against the covenant that i have made with god you understand what i'm trying to say wisdom is not how you conduct yourself when everybody is watching you wisdom is also how you conduct yourself when nobody is watching you you know that is godly god given wisdom if you just follow the 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 kind of uh, trend that the lady is kind of uh, proposing he, he say, she says you know you are in charge i am i am the head of the house in another sense if we could just cooperate with each other yeah you can get the best out of me i can get the best out of you nobody will ever know and and we can have the best of both worlds 
you know to use solomon's language he says stolen water is sweet and that is nothing to do with kindly you understand what i'm trying to say you know stolen water is sweet and bread ate in andarathi andarathil unnum inbam appam eppadi irukum in no i read my tamil bible that's my problem <laughs> are you with me you know that is sweet and the world will entice you to such an extent it will it will say being wise or being pleasing to god will will only lead you to fooling yourself you are a guy who does not know how to enjoy life but let me tell you wisdom is not how you conduct yourself in front of other people it is also how you conduct yourself when you are on your own and let me tell you godly wisdom will never let you down because it is god who is going to be with you until the end lift your hand and say big amen to that she says i cannot cooperate with you because i have a covenant with god and let me tell you when when you hold on to god god will give you the wisdom and the knowledge and the strength to do that which is right how do you kind of um, uh, let me put it like this the moment you think i think i can manage this that is when you lose your control i'm going to say that again the moment you think i am going to manage this you are not called to manage you are called to overcome if you are going to manage what is going to happen you know you know the, the lady is kind of advocating whatever she is and if so, joseph is going to stand there close your eyes close his eyes and speak in tongues what will happen oh come on come on what is going to happen hallelujah 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 you and you understand what i'm trying to say that is not going to work you know the bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you but the the bible says never resist lest you run away from it you know and when you run away from it lust will say polaikka theriyadavan polaikka therindavan you understand what i'm trying to say because we are living in a world that's full of temptation you know you don't have to go in search of temptation if you have a smartphone temptations are door delivered you understand what i'm trying to say we are living in such a situation but let me tell you our the all knowing the only wise god knows how to get you out of the problem and place you on the throne if you are with me say big amen to that because that is very important it is not just how we conduct ourselves in front of other people it is how we conduct ourselves even when we are on our own this wisdom it does not come from sensual appetites it does not come from an earthly realm but rather it comes from god himself let me give you another instance where joseph was so wise filled with the wisdom of god remember for for protecting himself and for being right a man of integrity he was falsely accused and he was thrown in, into the prison what happens in the prison come with me to the same chapter genesis chapter 39 verse 21 onwards but the lord was with joseph and extended kindness to him and he gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer verse 22 the chief jailer committed to joseph's charge all the prisoners who were in the jail so that whatever was done there he was responsible for it look to this particular verse the chief jailer did not supervise anything under joseph's charge because the lord was with him and whatever he did the lord made to prosper you see another aspect of wisdom here not only does it connects you to god's character it also connects you to faithfulness no matter where you are you know the world will say you were faithful in the house now look what has happened to you you know what that is the reward for being faithful in a world like this therefore don't be faithful you know just do whatever comes to your hand because only by taking that particular route can you work yourself up but again joseph is following a very different system he is following god's wisdom the bible says even when he was in prison the bible says the prisoner the person who was in charge handed over every responsibility into the hand of joseph and this is a very interesting word the bible says he never supervised whatever joseph whatever was in charge of joseph because he knew very well that joseph will always do a good job and that is why i'm saying when the wisdom of god comes upon you it is whether it is a palace whether it is a prison where it is your home whether it is a church you will always remain faithful and a faithful man will always abound with blessings lift your hand and say big amen this is how i picture it 
you know when the jailer goes home in that particular night he gives the keys of the prison to joseph and what does joseph do he gets into his cell locks it from outside and stays there until he comes in the next morning palakke theriyadavan no 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 palakke therindavan you understand what i'm trying to say remember another example paul and silas were singing songs of praise and the bible says there was an earthquake you know from god and all the doors were opened all the chains were gone and the jailer was about to take his own life then he hears a voice from the prison paul is shouting don't do any harm to yourself because we are not the runaway type you understand faithful even in prison situations the bible says a faithful man will abound with the blessing of god that is the wisdom that comes from above he did not become a somebody all of a sudden all these years one step at a time being faithful in house being faithful to the vision being faithful to god being faithful even when nobody is else is watching being faithful in the responsibilities that god has given into his hand and one fine day the bible says god lifted him and put him as head over the entire nation many people want that part of the story but they don't want to go through what happened behind the scenes so to speak for this particular young man to be made the prime minister of an entire nation at a very young age of 30 are you with me we need the wisdom of god say say together with me i need the wisdom of god you need to consult god you need to begin with god don't begin with what the media is saying don't begin with what your friends are saying your friends are not exactly the almighty you know if you are 15 and you are asking counsel with your friend who is also 15 you know what kind of counsel will you get you will only get you know sir, let me put it in another way our parents may not be smart but they have experience i came across that <laughs> they may not be smart but they have what they have a lot of experience you know ungalukala enna theriyum you understand what i'm trying to say you know there were times when we were the people who were saying those things now we are praying lord <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say they may not know everything but they have experience meaning if you take this particular road it will go to that particular dead end and that is why i'm already saying don't take that particular road because he is the way the truth and the life when he when a person comes to him he comes to the father of lights from whom all good things flow are you with me you need to begin with god say together with me i will begin with god to begin with god means to start with god's word and the spirit of god will give you the understanding he will give you the ideas he will give you the power to execute those ideas and when things are very hard things when and things get very tough in your life when you stand up for truth and for that sake you are put in prison even in prison remain faithful because god will always be faithful he will always bring his promise to fruition in your life one more aspect on with which i am going to pray this morning genesis chapter 40 and verse 15 these are things that wisdom connects us to our character that god's grace does a wonderful work in our hearts genesis chapter 40 and verse 15 this is how joseph you know kind of relates his problem to the cup bearer he says um in verse 15 for i was in fact kidnapped from the land of the hebrews and even here i have done nothing that they should have put me into this dungeon you know simple words but there is a lot of meaning to it he says i was kidnapped from the land of the hebrews you know is is joseph lying you know no he's not lying he is not accusing that's the important thing you need to understand you know was he kidnapped from from the land of the hebrews we know the story you can answer was he kidnapped from the land he was not kidnapped he was intentionally sold for so much money by his own brothers but when he is relating the story he never blamed his brothers he never blamed you know you know my family no no such kind of no such kind of thing never blamed you know i was sold by my own brothers i am emotionally scarred no no that kind of a tone he says i was kidnapped from my from my the, from the land of the hebrews then he goes on to say for me being in prison you know he says i have done nothing you know he is not saying they falsely accused me 
they kind of you know planted evidence they kind of framed me and that is why i ended up in prison no blaming others because he knew in his heart i don't have to justify i don't have to blame i don't have to accuse because the one who promised me is faithful to lift me up if you are with me say a big amen you know there are people who are really gone through bitter experiences in life and you can sit here and you can blame the rest of your life it's all because of them that i have ended up like this in my life you can either take that particular approach or you can take the other approach god causes all things to work together for me i'm not going to blame people i'm not going to justify what i did but rather i'm going to throw myself into the arms of the only wise god who can cause all things to work together for the good of those who love god and are called according to his purpose lift your hand and shout the big amen to that he never blamed anybody remember the time when the brothers were saying you know now jo jacob is dead and the brothers have this faint idea coming into their hearts he was waiting for father to die now he is going to take a revenge and joseph says these wonderful words you know he says i am not that kind of a person i am not that kind of a person have you not understood me still if i wanted to take revenge i could have done it long time ago the wisdom of god does not give you you know any kind of idea to take revenge but it gives you the grace for to wait for the vindication of god are you with me when god vindicates he will also bring about you know how how who is the real uh, party that needs to be punished and he will also bring out the innocent party out of the whole uh, uh, situation that a person might find himself in but uh, this morning just again i would like to reiterate this wonderful thought consult with god start with god because he is the only wise god you understand what i'm saying you know just because he stood up for the truth you know prison was not his permanent dwelling no the wise god he knows how to bring people out and he knows how to exalt the people but what we need this morning is lord i don't want any scheming i don't want any manipulation i don't want any accusing i don't want any justifying but rather i want to throw myself into the everlasting arms of the almighty god who is going to lift me up at the proper due time if you are with me say a big amen to that let's all stand to our feet the same holy spirit that was in joseph is also living inside of you and me this morning maybe you have gone through hardships and your heart is bleeding in the sense of you are hurt and you are feeling pain in your life and part of you seeks revenge part of you seeks vengeance but this morning god's word says begin with god consult with god rest in god throw yourself into the almighty's hand and he will lift you up at the proper time the wisdom that comes from above hates that which is evil the wisdom that comes from above has nothing to do with pride it has got nothing to do with arrogance it has got nothing to do with perverted tongue but rather it is all to do with what kind of god we worship he is a faithful god hallelujah would you say together with me he is a faithful god throw yourself into the faithfulness of god the bible says even when we are faithless he always remains faithful hallelujah lift your hand to worship god this morning as we humble ourselves and say lord take my life and lord let it be for your glory let it be for your honor the same spirit that was in joseph is the same holy spirit that lives in our hearts he will give you the strength to overcome your problems he will give you the strength to overcome your situation and what god has promised he will always bring it to fulfillment in your life hallelujah take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory take my life and let it be yours jesus take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory take my life and let it be yours we say
ourselves before your throne of grace this morning lord we want wisdom that comes only from you we don't want any lord crooked paths in our life we want to join with david this morning as he prayed lord search our hearts lord and and see if there is any hurtful way within us and lead us in the way that is everlasting fill us with the wisdom that transforms our character for the glory of your name i thank you lord that every goodness and mercy shall follow all of our days and i pray that will be the experience of your people as we follow you everything that we will ever need will always follow us we give you praise and we give you glory it's in jesus name god's people say may the grace of our lord jesus the love of god the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all now and forevermore amen amen god bless you god be with you